So today we have a special guest and that is Alyssa. She is my private client um, since two months and she's going to share with you her amazing transformational story and um, share with you like her amazing stories from dating, how much fun she's having right now. Um, so stay tuned, you will feel so inspired to date after this call. And um, yes, yeah, so let me see if do we, do we have any comments. So ladies, let us know in the comments if everything is working. I would really appreciate that because I'm still new to this um, Zoom live streaming. Okay, great. So I give the speech to you, my dear Alyssa. So please introduce yourself in a couple of sentences and then we move forward. Hello, ladies and everyone. My name is Alyssa Marie Canalicchio from the USA, Pennsylvania. <laughs> and um, I'm a singer songwriter and I've been happily working with Elizabeth since the week of my birthday. I thought, why not invest in myself as a gift to me? So. Great, great. Alyssa, so would you like to share with us um, where have you been before? Like before you have, you have worked with me and in your previous life. <laughs> okay. Um, well, two things. The first part is my family upbringing was very toxic and dysfunctional. Um, so a lot of that followed me into my adult years. And then I found myself in a very toxic relationship that lasted for almost six and a half years. And it, you know, in a small way, it was a trauma bond. And um, for those of you that don't know what that is, you can definitely look that up. Um, there's so many different signs and red flags to look out for. Um, this relationship had me so nervous, anxious, confused, I never knew what the future would be with this person. I wanted a future with this person. I wanted to grow with this person. And it so, was a trauma. Okay. So how have you felt in this old relationship? I was just always unsure and I was disempowered. I didn't feel confident. I was always doing so much to receive. Um, I would take on a lot of responsibilities for both myself and my partner. And um, I was always performing and wanting to get a validation. And I thought if I loved hard enough or if I did all of these things and I made life easy for this person, that they would appreciate me and suddenly like, you know, treat me how I should be treated 10 times fold. So many women go through that. So I've been there myself definitely too. And if you guys resonate with Alyssa, let us know in the comments as well. So you said you were feeling a little bit, um, you know, um, anxious and fearful and not appreciate that. And you were doing so, so much, but like nothing came back. And so what was the results uh, from all of that? Like health-wise, you know, mindset and um, yeah. I, my mindset was um, not, not good. I was just always searching for validation outside of myself and my health was declining. I was sacrificing a lot of my truth and who I am and my boundaries, my whatever I, whatever made me feel comfortable, I sacrificed it and I felt a lot of discomfort, um, but I was trying to get this kind of love any way that I thought was possible. And um, a lot of my friends would say, you are dimming your light. So that's what it was. Yeah, Alyssa is such a superstar and you know, you're not, um, <laughs> it was so sad that you were dimming your light or putting him first, you know. So, um, so where are you right now? Also, you know, through all your inner work journey, but also through the two months um, 
um, coaching with me. So how you, are you feeling now and what results do you see? Well, uh, the first result is I do not need medication. I, I was prescribed it when I was in that relationship. And um, for me, it made me feel a lot better to just move on to holistic healing and meditation. And I started practicing Buddhism. And uh, before I met you uh, for two years, I was looking up on YouTube different coaches and watching their relationship videos and just trying to understand personal growth uh, because I realized that all, it, it's not always that person. It's also something within us as well that we need to work on in order to have someone reflect back what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of my experiences were very hot and cold men um, in the beginning because I wasn't so sure of what I was looking for and I was very hot and cold myself. And that also was because of my parental upbringing. So those of you out there that want to look up attachment styles, definitely do so. Yeah. And yeah. So right now, like how uh, did you change to now? Like, so how are you feeling generally right now? And what are the manifested outcomes in your life that you are seeing as a change? I'm feeling amazing i feel like i've been called a queen by men and friends and women alike i i embody it i've been told that i already have a crown that no one can physically see but i have it and i'm presenting myself in a way that people respect me more and respect my time and my value i've been able to claim my value and claim my voice and have others see me for who I am and want to pay me. I have had uh, people offer to take me shopping. I've had friends, I've had very high value men send me money. Yeah, you <laughs> have the price. Like right now, her, uh, like, um, em like we can say employees, like they're fighting for her. Like men are fighting for her. People want, uh, are like fighting to like have her work for um, like, they want to pay you and they're like fighting for you to like work for them right yeah <laughs> it's a good price yeah so let's go um into the juicy details so maybe we can even start with um with the relationships or ju just like a little overview so you say um everything improved kind of right so you claimed your health um and in relationship you start attracting better behavior so what exactly happened in uh there so for my health, I, when I was in that relationship, I was overweight. And uh, after leaving that relationship, I joined a gym right around the corner. And now I work there. And I'm working to become a trainer there because everyone loves my attitude and wants to lift me up and give me a raise. So I'm working on that. And in doing so, I've also learned that my relationship with money was the same with men. And I was always overworking. And now I know that I don't have to work so hard to overextend myself. Um, so right and... now, you learn that you can just be and receive, right? Yes. So share with us the story of, um, if you are open to, of um, like the story how you could open up to receive from men. And also, even, you know, remember women helping you around. Like, it's not always money, right, that we receive. It's also help, nice words. So share with us a couple of stories where um, you, you kind of received um, just because you deserve that. So actually, this is going to be a double. So my for my health, um, there was a fibroid that developed into a benign tumor and I fully believe that it was a manifestation of all of the stress and trauma that I had previously so I had recently gotten surgery and through that surgery you helped me better receive from not just men but like friends and family and I've had so many come to help me. I've had people bring me food. I've had people come just give me company. I've had people that don't even know me too well send me little fun activity books yeah. um, to kind of, while I was in bed rest just to be. And I last week, um, a friend of mine offered to take me food shopping because I couldn't lift 
So I didn't have food for a little bit. I mean, I was, I was okay, but it was getting, you know, it was getting empty and uh, I was holding back and my friend offered to take me food shopping and she didn't want anything for it. She just wanted to help me. And she said, I deserve it. And I, I fully like accepted it and thanked her. And I have a, I'm so proud of you to open up. And I remember our conversations where you were like saying, Oh, it's so different to just receive, but you know, especially in this time where you had been, you know, after your surgery, it was so important to strengthen this feminine muscle to receive. That's amazing. And in dating, so um, can you share with us a couple of nice stories where you could, where you see, seen men like just like wanting to give to you, give you like things, support. Can you share with us a couple of nice stories? I've had one where when you and I first started working together, I was worried about the finances and a good friend of mine from a Netflix show that I'm on, uh, sing on episode two, cheap plug. And <laughs> um, he sent me a hundred dollars to go towards um, our coaching. And he fully believed in just my growth and helping me um, succeed and, and be better. Yeah. And I, how amazing is that like can your girls believe that she just like on the call with me oh it was like literally on the call this guy texted her oh i would like to help you out like i would like to support you with your uh, new coach like it was like on the call right it was just like what amazing like we would we never expected that I, I did not. I was so, I was so shocked. And he still messages me to this day, these beautiful, like long, like met, like long poems of like inboxes of like how wonderful I am and how blessed he is to just know me and be in my presence. Yeah. Masculine energy is like really like, and it's just like only energy. And that's why men and money are the same when you have like healthy masculine energy it's just coming towards you and it's so easy and it just wants to make you happy. So that's why when we allow us to receive the great support from men, but also the great support for money, it can be so easy. And it's just going to come towards you where you become so magnetic. And also the, the uh, other behaviors that I've attracted with one particular partner that I have now, um, his name is James and he, <laughs> when we first started dating, it was the first week of March. We didn't kiss or anything until maybe the fifth date. But in the between that I had my surgery, he came to see me while I was recovering the next day before his show. He drove all this way, came to see me, he brought me flowers and he picked up my medication for me. And he gifted me a new DVD player. He gifted me an Amazon Fire Stick. And he has just been so great with communication and just such a great gentleman. And anytime, like if I go to see him, like I, I make a drive to go see him and I say like, oh, I'm feeling hungry. And he, without missing a beat, he would just like say, oh, well, what, what would you like? And he gave me his credit card and told me to order whatever I wanted and even offer for me to like, do it again like whenever I come back and I was just like wow <laughs> amazing but I'm also so proud of you because you applied you know like this teaching give men your problems you know like if you would tell him I'm hungry now you have to order me food and now you also have to pay he would probably like uh no but you're like I'm hungry well okay I'm I'm the man I'm solving the issue here's my credit card buy yourself something <laughs> so, yes. oh yeah she's actually that but she's also like attracting because of her new appearance she's like telling the problems to the man and so he can step up and that's so amazing i'm so proud of you and um it's such a blessing that you could attract um so high value men and he also always like his energy coming towards you so everything is just perfect yeah always always and I, I I very much appreciate how you always um feel around him how do how do I always feel around him mm -hmm. I feel very secure and safe and unseen and heard are the two that him and I always 
always um, uh, compliment each other with because he's um, very he's very in touch with his feminine side and he understands and I really appreciate his communication and we've just been we actually had our first aware with all those inner work things like yes yes very self aware right yes our second date he gave me a book <laughs> you know and yeah mm-hmm. and um uh we actually just had our first i don't want to call it it wasn't even a fight it was more so like a, a tiny misunderstanding of like where we both misanalyzed each other and we yeah, actually we sat opinions right yeah we had different opinions on something and we both were very honest and opened up about well I thought this way when you said this and he said, Oh no, no, no. I thought this when you said this and we actually like, like fixed it together. And it was so nice. So amazing. This is just a sign of a really conscious couple behavior where you don't mm-hmm. fight against each other. You don't attack him. He doesn't attack you, but you're like, there's something like between us. What is it? Okay. Let's, let's fix this problem. And you guys, you know, have been so conscious together. I'm just still stunned until today that he, like you guys didn't take it personal, but more like, okay, like what's the misunderstanding here? That's amazing. Yeah. And I, I actually told him, I said, you know, I really appreciate that I can talk with you without feeling like we are going to demonize each other. And he paused and he was like, I want you to know that not you you don't ever have to dim your light with me you don't ever have to feel like I'm judging you and I will always respect your view and I always will not I will not demonize you in any way I'm not going to judge you and so amazing yeah and I just like I wake up and I'm like really you're in my inbox like <laughs> yeah this is in our inbox to a man that you even feel attracted to that's so amazing and um that's also something that i'm very proud of you too because what i'm seeing um in my coaching that so many times women just take a long time to make the switch okay because we are attracted to what we um know so when we know being rejected as children we feel attracted to men that reject us and it took me a long time even up to a year coaching I was coached always the whole year it took me up to one year being coached myself back then to feel attracted even to men at a high value it took me a really long time and my other clients it also takes them a long time but you are just so fast like you transformed and you feel attracted to high value men you attract high value men so your transformation is just really amazing and fast yeah you well you called it you said like when we first started talking I was I was already at a, a level and uh, I just needed a push yeah and, um, me already really um really far you've done a lot of inner work too that's true that's true but also share with us how consistent he is opposed to back then when you have attracted hot and cold men who also like you know where you have not been the priority but like some other like girls and now you are the priority um, of the men like you don't accept anything else of course um you're the priority and only attract uh, you know consistent guys who are, are consistent there yes well I do want to make a point that I did a lot of I don't I don't call it sacrificing it's 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 like cutting out the the extra stuff I when we first started working together I cut off all of the men that were inconsistent even ones that I thought were booty calls they no, no, if it's not what I'm looking for in the long run, and if it's not helping me on my growth and towards what I want in a relationship, then it doesn't, it shouldn't be there. So there was a long time that I've actually been celibate for about eight months. So I, I cut off all of them. And, um, and then after that, I started working with you soon, soon after. And this man, um, I would say I feel statements and I would say it feels so good to hear from you every day and it feels so good to hear from you first thing in the morning and I adore hearing from you before I go to sleep and it feels good to say good night to you and he reciprocates so much and he would I would lay back like you know the feminine we wait we lay back we don't initiate and he 
would message me around the same time frames every morning and he would say good morning lady good morning baby or good morning beautiful like something you know or he gives me nicknames and you know we just kind of go back and forth and um it's always been nice and then even in moments when like i feel that that anxious side come in like if i'm like oh i haven't heard from him like oh man like it's been a while like i'll go like meditate or i'll go do something because like that's still like part of the quantum dating, like, or I'll go spend time with friends and he'll like pick up on it and he'll message me. He did it last night, actually. Like I was thinking of sending him something and I didn't. And then like, he messaged me right away. This is so like, amazing Whoa. that you always apply of that. So all of that. So you learned, um, you know, to manage your own emotions. So whenever you feel anxious or even triggered, you learn to like, to calm yourself yourself down to do a work or meditate whatever um you need to do in this moment but also um you guys know that i i was talking in my group that circular dating isn't always about dating other men but it's mostly about um about you know your energy being um distracted with others so i can even share a story back then for me like i used to date this one guy and i start circular dating i date others but I was always thinking about this guy, so it didn't help. So actually, it's 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 really about, you know, putting yourself first, laying back. If he's not there, okay, I just focus on my work. I focus on my friends. I focus on my hobbies. I focus on me. When he's ready, he will initiate and he will um, come to, back to me. And oh gosh, like guys, when they see you, that you're not stepping up, they usually always step up they know okay she's not gonna text me so i have to like this is just so subconscious and even Mm -hmm. doesn't text you for a long period and you still don't step in just he knows he knows Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah like um or last night was a great example you helped me like work through that i i i wanted to say good night to him and i we were messaging back and forth and i said do you want to say good night and he didn't see my message for a while and because of my schedule I had to wake up early. So I, I had to think of me first. I still had to put me first. And I was in my head like, no, 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 you will not stay up any later and wait for him. He didn't get, he didn't see your message. That's fine. Go to bed. It's, it's for your, you need rest. He can wait. And this morning, um, I saw his, his missed call. He did call me and I messaged him and I was like, Hey, I'm so sorry. I missed you. I, I was already asleep by the time you called me, but I'm happy that you reached out. And then he messaged me back and he said, I'm sorry that I missed you. I waited. I didn't see your message until too late. Yeah. And we like, just picked up. This is what high value men do. And I, like you remember last night we were talking and I was even sharing with you. Yeah, put yourself first, and I promise you, a high value man will not blame you or will not be like, oh, like she's gonna. He'll be like, oh, I was too late. <laughs> you know, he'll be like, I'm sorry, I was so late. I didn't text you good night. Like he will take the charge. Like he takes the lead and he takes charge. So, you know, like a simple example is also when something in your house is broken. I had it myself too, and you know, something in your house is broken, and then a guy comes in and says, oh, like this looks bad. Like this is broken like back it was like even uh, a time back then I was like oh it, that doesn't feel good you're saying that like I I don't appreciate you pointing out what's broken like if you want to fix it go ahead but like if you don't but now like, any times a man would I have to date him for a longer time to let him in my home but anytime a man would come in like like they don't say like oh this is broken they'll be like oh this is broken like I guess I'm gonna fix it next time so this is what also like uh, Kari does right (laughs) there's two things that he did so far so the first time um uh the set well the second time he came over and we were gonna watch a movie he was like oh do you want to show me around I was like okay so um I have a a a broken glass in my door and in the basement so it gets really cold and I was like, oh, I, you know, I said, oh, I apologize, like that, that door, like I need to fix it. It gets really drafty. And he looked and he said, oh, it just needs like some insulation. I can, I can fix that for you. And I was like, sure. Yeah, I would love that. And then the second time um, I received it, right? Let's stop here. Yeah, for- sure. 
just need appreciation you being able to receive and he's like i have purpose in life i'm a hero like now my life is making sense because there's somebody who needs me and there's somebody who can receive my love they just so crave it and it's like such a win-win because we women like we feel better when we are like receiving and we feel loved and then he wants to give to you and then when you allow him to fix your door he's like i fix her door like such a man <laughs> Yes. And then, um, and I kept, I kept for, like the, I kept losing my keys and like, he was like, oh man, we, how are we going to remedy this? We need to fix this. Like he kept saying we, and he, he was like, you know, I have these things like on my keys that they helped me find them. He was like, maybe I can get one for you. And I'm just like, yeah, you can, mm -hmm. like, <laughs> um, it's so, it's so nice. And I met his mom, uh, this past weekend. So that's, that's a very good sign. I think. <laughs> Yeah, that's amazing. Is there anything else you would like to share with us where you are now that you see such a transformation to back then? I think I would like to point out one thing, and that is that I just see your energy being so much, um, you know, so much, um, so much happier. You're like, you're like having a purpose, destination, more connection to yourself. But maybe you would like to share something um, about that. I, I I would I mean I don't know how to explain it I just there there comes a time in your life when you have to sit down with yourself and ask when is when is it enough when is enough enough and if you really want change you have to change something within you first and you have to do a lot of introspection and ask yourself a lot of deep questions and they're not easy questions and my growth was it wasn't like super fast overnight, you know, it was lots of crying and lots of um, just understanding yourself. And um, I, I don't know, I'm so thankful. Um, and just kind of looking at life in a different perspective and start being, having a, an attitude of gratitude. Um, oh, helps. And inner work isn't easy. Like even when you have a coach, inner work isn't easy because the coach only helps you you know finding the destination holding you accountable sharing with you okay this is like for example high value behavior from this man this is not a good behavior should you lead, lead forward no no stay home like let him call you let him text you let him help you so a coach like shows you like the fast track but the work you're still doing yourself so um we also had to talk right um, that every time you go a step higher, your body is not used to that. So your body might be resisting and you might even start feeling guilty or weird. Or, oh, I just cut off like my aunt who always accused me. Oh, like this just feels so wrong. But actually, oh, that's such a good thing to cutting off somebody who accused you all the time, drain your energy. But mm -hmm. what I just want to share is like having this uh, resistance to move forward is still there. And that's why like all the... Um, accountability or all the um, like you have done it yourself right I was just there for you as a guide but you went to work you went through the resistance trying new things mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah no it was a lot of um, letting go of toxic family members and owning my truth my voice um, letting people hear my perspective and where I'm coming from even if it makes me feel uncomfortable I've learned that I would feel better knowing that I went with my gut and my decision yeah. versus someone else's decision and what they want from me. Yeah, that's amazing. And even receiving felt in the beginning a little bit uncomfortable for you, right? But it was like a bit uncomfortable, but it was like better and you practice it and it was better and better. And now it's like, oh, yes, he just buys me food, like dinner, like I can order. So, oh, so easy, right? <laughs> Yeah, no, it felt so good. Um, and uh, I, yeah, it was very hard in the beginning, because I always felt like I, I had to, because of the household I grew up in, I felt like if someone gave something to me, I was in debt to them, and I had to do something back right away, or I had to perform or, you know, be overly, like gracious or feel feel unworthy of accepting. Um, so it was, a, it was a lot to turn around and it feels good yeah so all the conditioning they shape us right so we all want to be like the feminine receiving woman but sometimes we are conditioned to feel unworthy or feel 
oh, like if I receive, I have to give back. So maybe some of you resonate with that. So share with us definitely in the comments, even when you're like um, watching this in the replay. Okay, so um, is there anything else you would like to share with the audience? Any calls to action? Like if somebody wants to have this amazing transformational journey as you like, um, you know, like having turning around your health and being so much more calm and empowered and dating um, like high value men, like what should they do or what would you like to share with them to inspire and empower them? Mm. You are in full control of your circumstances and everything in your life. You are in control. It's, it's your life and you can change anything literally you can change anything through meditation through choice today I wrote a quote that my co-workers loved and I'll tell you we all have one choice and one choice can change your life so uh, every day is a choice and it just depends on the choices that you make and if you want something bad enough you will do the work and you will you will see the results and it's not going to happen overnight so don't beat yourself up and would you also say if you want something bad enough, the support is going to come, like the money, the um, whatever support you need, um, it's just a reason and it's going to come? It, it will, actually. I, if, if I may, I would like to share the story about how I wound up on that show. It was the same thing. I was so alone and upset from that relationship ending. And all I did was I chanted every day I or meditated. I meditated every day and I used my voice the way that I knew how it would be in a positive format. And I kept singing and I kept posting videos. And lo and behold, within five months of just focusing on my craft and my talent, I had the opportunity to be flown to London and sing on a Netflix show. Wow. And that was less than a year of that ending. So you see, so the universe supports you like whenever you really, really want it and own yourself. Like the universe never says no to you. When you say yes to you and you believe I can have it, mm -hmm. I don't know how, but I can have it, you mm -hmm. will have it. Like this is just no question. No question. And you you can't you can't say, I want this, but because you're you're contradicting you have to fully believe that you are worthy and that you can receive what it is that you're asking for and you just let go and let god you just say what you want and you don't know how you don't have to know how you're going to get there but you will get there and the doors will open and you just have to be willing to receive and yeah. willing to do the work absolutely that's so amazing such an amazing sharing okay great then um Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us live. Um, say hi in the comments and um, <laughs> and um, goodbye. So, yeah, such a such a pleasure to be talking to you, Alyssa. Me too, always. I'm excited for our call.